Right, links are the web's currency. This is a phrase you hear quite often in SEO circ um, circles. And the basic idea is that um, the more links you have and the higher the quality of the links, it's a bit like cash. The, the better off, the richer your, your site is. So in terms of site promotion these days, it's all about getting quality links. I say in the old days, it was um, just links, you know, as many links as possible, no matter where they came from. I say links from bad areas um, could possibly actually harm your website these days. So uh, if you have um, links with... Um, exactly the same anchor text in them from say a, a thousand different places that's going to look very suspicious to google it's going to look like you bought those in from somewhere and uh, again you could get penalized for that sort of activity so uh, make sure your um your links they look organic they look natural and uh, the best way to get natural links is build good content other people start linking to you simple as that now counting the links to your sites um the only definitive way to do this is to use the uh, uh, things like the Google Webmaster tools um, but that only works for your own website if you want to look at um, links to uh, your site and indeed other people's sites then you can use um, this uh, search uh, phrase here so within Google you type in link colon and then the name of the, um, the URL so if we fire this up in this particular example here I've typed in link colon www.example.com uh, which is just an example website and as you can see in this particular case, around about 4,230 links to this particular website uh, have been logged by Google. Now, something else you can do is you can provide HTML code actually on your web pages. So if people want to link to your site, if they're not hugely technical, they can just simply copy the code from your website and uh, drop it into uh, their own websites or their blogs or whatever. Um, if you do this, you should uh, change it on a regular basis because if you have large numbers of people using exactly the same sort of anchor text and the same link structure, then again, that's a sort of um, that sort of activity is going to look uh, suspicious to Google and uh, the other search engines. So uh, you always want, as I say, or, you know, organic looking um, linking is basically the phrase that Google uses. So you should change the anchor text every so often. So um, in some cases, you might want to have uh, a really good anchor text match. In other cases, you might just simply have something like click here or for more information, click here. So basically, you, uh, you mix them up a bit. That's sort of the best advice these days. Right, link baiting. The idea behind link baiting is that if you have quality content, it's going to attract viewers. And once you've attracted the viewers, then um, ideally a proportion of those will think, oh, this is good stuff. And they'll start linking to your um, quality pages from their website. Um, so there's various ways of basically trying to um, attract links and so that the concept is called link baiting so for instance things like top 20 or top 10 lists are very very important very uh, very popular so if you can in your particular industry or, or, or service um, if you can come up with a top 10 list that's better than anybody else's top 10 list or a top 20 list whatever or a possibly a 101 page these are just pages aimed at um, um, sort of, as of explain things on a fairly simple level. Um, if you can come up with these and they're better than other people, then basically you're more than likely going to have people linking to your top 10 lists or top 20 lists. Um, so as you can see at the bottom there, as an example, if you're a, um, a chiropractor, you could have uh, a web page titled something like um, Top 10 Myths About Chiropractors, and uh, people in turn might uh, spontaneously link to that after, after a little while. Now, quality links, quality of content rather, attracts links. It, it's really that simple. Um, you should, um, you know, if you take the example of a plumbing site, um, top 10 plumbing tips, uh, make it, make the appeal of your top 10 lists or, or um, your quality articles as broad as possible. Or sometimes make it very specific so that, you, you know, in one case, if it's broad, it's appealing to more people, it's very specific. You're supplying detailed information that maybe a smaller number of people might actually require but maybe it's more likely people are going to link to that. So it's worth spending time putting these lists together. They tend to be very popular, and it's the sort of thing that people search for. You know, the the best whatever, or the top 10 whatever, or um, recommended whatever. So do a little bit of research, see the sort of things out there already, and then just try and do um, something that's better than what's already out there. Uh, do remember that um, 
most of the content on the uh, the web is uh, copyrighted, so there's no point in just simply going to somebody else's top ten list in your you know, in your particular area, uh, just simply copying that and pasting it into your um, your website. Um, a, it's uh, it could be illegal, and B, it'll probably be regarded as duplicate content, so you actually end up being penalised rather than helping the uh, the website. So uh, you know, do be a little bit careful on that. In a similar sort of way, if you've got a very good top ten list or top twenty list, whatever you might find people in turn start copying your content and pasting it onto their websites if it was theirs. So one thing you might like to consider is using, excuse me, using what are called absolute ULRs within the, um, uh, the linking systems. So for instance, within um, your top 10 list, you've got a link to um, say more information on one of your uh, web pages. Instead of just having what's called the relative link, you have an absolute link and an absolute link basically starts off with HTTP colon forward slash um, www etc. So basically, you give it the full the full URL listing as opposed to what's called the relative listing. That basically means when someone copies that to someone else's website, um, chances are um, they might not check it properly, and it will still link back to your uh, to your original uh, articles. Right. Do not use automated link building schemes. Again, um, Google specifically warns you about this. So you know if you get spam email. On, that says something like, um, you know, get 200 links for $20. It seems like a good deal, but if you think about it, for $20, 200 links, what are you buying? Rubbish, probably. Um, it's going to do you no good whatsoever, and quite possibly it's going to harm your website. So um, just don't get involved with automated link schemes. Right, free ebooks. This is an example of um, link baiting. Basically, if you produce a nice quality um, uh, product, a free um, ebook, which is probably just a, a document in a Word format or PDF format, then um, if it uh, if it looks good, if it's well produced, uh, not full of typos and all the rest of it, but if it's well produced, if it's informative, then chances are people will come to your site, people will tell other people about your site, and more importantly, people will link to your site. Um, there will be a certain amount of people who just simply rip off the ebook, repost it on their site and, and what have you, but you're always going to get that on the, on the internet. But uh, ignoring them, then as I say, with the more legitimate uh, people on the internet, chances are this is a good way of getting uh, links to your website. So, uh, it, you know, but basically make it as high quality as possible. Don't make the mistake a lot of people do, which is basically forcing people to register with their maybe name and email address. Some people think, oh, this is a great way of um, building up a database. Well, by and large, uh, people, when they're forced to fill in a, a form in exchange for something, uh, the majority of them probably just simply leave at that point or um, there'll be a, another huge number who'll just simply fill in a, an incorrect email address and I hope that you'll still give them the, um, the free download link anyway. Um, do bear in mind that uh, Google will index Word documents and PDF documents. So again, if you have produced a nice quality ebook in uh, either PDF or uh, Microsoft Word format, then as well as your website pages themselves, the, um, the ebook uh, providing it's um, atta you know, basically attached via a normal sort of text link or whatever, then that will also be indexed within the Google search engine results. So it's kind of win-win, really. Right, investigating competitor links. Uh, basically search Google and um, type in your favorite phrase, and maybe check out the first three pages worth of results and really look at these in detail and see um, what sort of links people have to their websites, what sort of outgoing links they have, and, but basically use these to get as much information as possible about why they're on the top, uh, top 30 within Google. You can use uh, this uh, syntax within um, Google to search for um, the number of links to a particular website and the syntax is link colon then the URL. So if we look at this for real, in this case I typed in link colon www.ctglobal.com which is our Courseware website. And as you can see in this case, there's around about 72 different links to um, this particular website. So this is a good way of basically finding out how many links there are to um, a particular website and also where the links are from. So if I was a competitor of this website, I could look through these links here, get through to towards the end. We got the Google Plus um, details there pointing to the website. And uh, I say, but basically you can search through these for yourselves and basically see uh, where your competitors have got links from 
and then maybe approach those sites and ask for a link to your website as well. It's so an easy way of getting links. And you do it, of course, if the links are worth having. Right, link exchanges. It's an old idea, this idea of reciprocal linking, where basically uh, you find someone else who wants a link and you swap, you put a link to your website, they put one to yours. Um, these days, it's, um, it's not really going to harm you in moderation. If you do it a lot, it might well harm you. Um, but the value of reciprocal links these days is pretty well worthless. Um, basically, Google is looking for one-way links to your website um, and basically from links that have a high page rank, a high value. So reciprocal linking, a thing of the past, really. Take care when considering free link pages. There's loads of these. If you do a quick search for free link pages or free, free linking sites, something like that, you'll find there's loads and loads of pages where you can just uh, submit your details and uh, get a free link. Uh, many of these will have a page rank of zero or one. They're, they're pretty useless, really. Um, so again, probably not worth doing. Something else you should get into the habit of doing is putting Google Plus One and Facebook uh, Live buttons on your website. Um, this basically makes it easy for people to sort of vote for their, their feet. If they like you, they can click on the buttons and basically you get uh, more likes. And uh, the more of these you get, the, um, the better it's going to be for your website. It's like a voting system, basically.